point I recognize is the gentleman from New Jersey, uh, Representative Gavmeyer. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Cleaver and Ranking Member Hill, for calling together this hearing and to all of our witnesses for being here today. Uh, TransUnion, one of the big three credit bureaus, runs a weekly survey that shows that 29% of consumers say they've been targets of digital fraud related to COVID-19. On top of that, AARP's Fraud Watch Network recently reported that there has been a steep increase in scams targeting the elderly and other vulnerable communities. These nefarious actors, both domestic and international, are using the pandemic and preying on people's fragile states during these uncertain times to target their hard-earned retirement accounts, their unemployment checks, and other savings. Uh, Ms. Shen, from your perspective of working directly to prevent cybercrime as the chair of the Cybersecurity Committee, for the NASAA, do you agree that the seniors are, that seniors are disproportionately the victims of cyber criminals? And what challenges do law enforcement run into while trying to prevent this population from falling victim to frauds and scams? Thank you, Congressman. Uh, yes, uh, seniors are disproportionately targeted. Uh, they hold most of the nation's wealth. I mean, if you, you know, work your entire life and you're golden years, you hopefully can sustain the rest of your life through the retirements that you save. Criminals know that. That's where the money is. They've also, uh, you know, you guys have heard the study where as you age, your uh, cognitive function decline and your financial judgment is part of that. And so they are, in essence, more vulnerable uh, to financial fraud because of that the weakening in their financial judgment. Our, um, through NASA, our North American Securities Administration, we have developed a model law to uh, report the suspected financial exploitation of seniors. And through that law, which 27 states have passed, yesterday was Elder Abuse Awareness Day, and we were pleased to announce that. We have um, reports coming in, so we can review. I've got a stack of them on my desk here of the types of frauds that seniors are being exposed to, and especially now during the plague, COVID-19 um, pandemic. Seniors are at home. They're being isolated. They're away from their friends and family that normally check on them to see how things are going and ensure that they're not, you know, online surfing the internet and being... Um, listed by fraudsters. And uh, so it's critical that during this time, reach out to your friends and family, check on them, make sure that um, things aren't unusual, you know, red flags, talk about those all day, but um, to continue to report suspected financial exploitation. I wanna mention one thing about the financial industry because we regulate on a state level, the small businesses. And I know you guys are talking at a macro level, but on a micro level, we see the trickle down. I sit down with the victim investors and talk with them about the fraud that have impacted them. And some of them have been ripped off their entire life savings. And it's a problem for all of us because they're trying to public welfare. Um, I'm sorry, what baby. do you think um, states, if I could just follow up on that, what do you think states can do? What what should we equip states to do to be able to you know fight back and protect vulnerable populations from fraud? Are there things you'd recommend? Congressman, yes. Um, I mentioned in my opening remarks and in my written testimony, we. NASA supports the Senior Investor Pandemic and Fraud Protection Act, and I believe that uh, legislation that you're interested in, which was apply, allow states to apply for a grant. And I know we do a great job with the limited resources that we have, so we can do better. Um, for example, in Alabama, we are able through a small grant to hire a victim service officer to assist our financial uh, abuse victims, mostly seniors. Um, with reporting and to provide that human element. So it's critical, yes. That yeah, I, I think I'm glad you mentioned, I mean, this uh, the legislation that I've uh, drafted, the Senior Investor Pandemic and Fraud Protection Act, you know, does a lot of, I, I think would help really in that effort, right? To allow yeah. qualified states to apply for these grants to, right, to be able to hire and train investigative staff, which which seems like that would make it, you know, seems like that would make a difference, whether it's purchasing technology and equipment or, 